We welcome you inside our Sportsnet LA studios, day two of Cactus League play. I'm joined by Jerry Hurston Jr. We had some late inning drama there in Peoria, Arizona. A big opportunity for the Dodgers loading the bases there in the ninth inning. Can we call them the fighting show Dodgers, even in spring training? I love that never give up attitude. We had a chance to take the lead. It just didn't happen. All in all, Pretty good show by the Dodgers today. Battled back, but they came up a run short. Let's head back to Peoria because the skipper, Dave Roberts, is standing by with Kirsten Watson. Dave, I mean, first out, we saw Ryan Pepio come out here on the mound. He struggled a little bit at first, but how did you see him handle the situation? Uh, he handled like a pro, and, and obviously he was disappointed. I talked to him a little bit after, and uh, he was frustrated, upset. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's a process, and I just thought the stuff was good. There was some weak contact, but overall he just didn't command the baseball today. You saw a couple of the big league guys play yesterday as well as today. And with players like Trey Turner as well as Cody Bellinger, they had two singles today. How was it just seeing the bats get going early in the game? It was good. You know, I gave Trey grief about yesterday. Uh, didn't do anything, so he responded with a couple knocks. Uh, you know, CT played well. Cody got a couple knocks. So uh, Gavin, I thought, uh, looked good today. So it was good for those guys to get on track. All right, and again, we see the younger guys with the home runs. How much fun is that? It's great. And, uh, you know, I just learned yesterday that uh, Jason Martin's first major league home run was against Andy Burns and so uh, he's homered on back-to-back -back days so it's good to see him and, and Eddie Alvarez say homered so still a lot of good things it always shows how much potential is still coming through this organization absolutely thanks so much Dave oh, you got Kirsten it is a short spring schedule there in Arizona only 15 games of Cactus League play this was game two of the 15 let's get right to it Dodgers making the short drive looking ahead on the Dodgers Cactus League schedule all 1 p.m. starts for the next five days against the Cubs White Sox Reds Guardians and Rockies next Friday the first game under the lights in Arizona a 6 p.m. first pitch against Colorado all spring games right here on Sportsnet LA. Of course, it is spring training for all of us in the, in the broadcasting industry as well. And a couple of ABs this weekend for Joe Davis and Eric Karras. You guys did uh, awfully well. I guess, I guess I'd say two for two. Good Thank job, you. guys. You yeah. feel uh, feel like your timing's right and you built up? You ready to go? I'm ready to roll. I, you know, I feel like I only called the, what did I call it? I called Mike Ford, Lou Ford today. Right. So you got Other than that, I'm locked in, man. I'm ready. <laughs> Lou Ford was a pretty good player. See, that's what I'm talking about yeah, right there. I tried player. to explain it. These guys didn't know. That's my Ford. generation. My, Lou Ford. That's our generation. That's right. Our generation. There's currently a Lou Ford who's the hitting coach for the Long Island Ducks. I don't know if it's the same Lou. I bet you it's the same guy. Probably is the I same. I can get on that Google. I mean, we, we all could do that. You should do it at home. Check Lou Ford. Uh, the outcomes of the game is not necessarily important, right? right? You're just looking for... Like you mentioned, the timing and seeing the ball. And a uh, couple games in, shortened spring training, so just 17 to go. What's your progression over these next few weeks if you're a hitter? So if, I, if I'm a hitter, I want to see pitches. I, I want to see the strike zone. And it depends who I am as well. It, you know, if I'm somebody that is established, if I'm Cody Bellinger, I'm just trying to get comfortable. I'm trying to feel good about my swing. I'm trying to stay healthy. But as spring goes along, what I'm really, I'm not looking for numbers so much as I'm looking to pick up pitches, watch how the balls move, learn my strike zone, just so when I get to the season, I'm ready to roll. If I'm a younger guy, man, I'm looking for numbers. Man, I got to hit the ball out. I got to, you know, impress the coaching staff. So, you know, two different approaches. Same thing for pitchers, right? If you're a, a veteran pitcher, like you talked about today, maybe you're just working on fastball location. Right. Ryan Pepio is not that guy yet. The numbers today weren't good. When you're a young guy coming off a performance like that, what is your, what's the mind frame well, moving forward? Well, so if I'm Pepio, I, I'm, I'm going to rationalize it by, look at that leadoff hit Moore had was a, off his hands. Yeah. It just got by me. Then I hit a guy and it only gave up two hard hit balls in two innings. I didn't have his location, but it was the home run, and then he gave up a double. Not as bad as the line score looked. I'm going to say, okay, you know, my changeup, it was okay. I, I left it out over the plate. The, the Souza home run, fastball a little low. Maybe I can ride it a little higher. I'm not going to make too much of things. You know, it's going to be one of those, all right, I got my feet wet. I'm ready to go for spring now. Uh, news piece last night, Kenley Jansen has signed with the Atlanta Braves. It's going to be odd, first of all, to see him in a uniform other than the Dodger uniform, obviously. But uh one of the all-time greats for the Dodgers, specifically doing what he did as good as anybody that's ever done it. Well, and that's the thing is you, you take it for granted, right? Because you you 
know that he's been here every year. Uh, he's had success. And look, there were some times that the fans would get frustrated, but the reality is you look at what he's done over the course of his career, I mean, he's he's going to be in the conversation as a Hall of Famer. I mean, that that's just the reality of it. Dodgers are going to miss him. There, there's no question. Now, do they have arms to fill that void? Yes, but they do not have what he brought as far as experience, postseason experience. You have some guys that have done it before, but not the amount of time and not with really the success that Kenley Jansen has had. Postseason experience, yeah, but like bona fide closing experience, very little of that too. I mean, Hudson a little bit, trying in a little bit, but that's certainly going to be yep. one of the areas that'll be a question going into the season. Another question is, what is the competition going to look like in the National League? We touched on a little bit during the game. There are several teams you can make cases for as the Dodgers' biggest competition. How do you kind of shake out the race going in? Wow. I, you know, for me, because it's a 12-team playoff situation now, there's a number of teams that once they get in, they can be dangerous. I mean, you look at the Mets. I mean, with that, that rotation, I mean, they could be a real problem. Uh, you know, the Padres, if they get in, you know, Tatis is back at the end of the year. He's swinging it. They've got some offense. Um, you know, I, I don't know. The Brewers, for me, if they swing the bat, they could be a problem because you've got Woodruff and Burns, and then, you know, you've got Hader at the end. So it's going to be an exciting year. It's going to be a real no clear-cut favorite, although I do like the Dodgers over 162. They're without question right now the, the deepest team on paper. Don't you feel like we should stop talking about it and get the real games going? I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. I, I actually feel pretty ready, too, so why don't you and I just we'll get out of here. Just, just I listen to John to and guys. Jerry. The rest of the for the real we'll see season. You, uh, back for the freeway <laughs> series, Joe. Enjoy the next couple of weeks, and uh, Jerry's going to keep Googling Lou Ford. 268 <laughs> lifetime hitter. That's better than you. And you were right. Uh, easier there. <laughs> You're right. He is a Long Island hitting coach, former major leaguer, Lou Ford. So you guys were on your A game. Good job. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, All John. right, well, the National League is going to be awfully tough to get through this coming season. The World Series champs have added Kenley Jansen, Colin McHugh to their bullpen, traded for A's all-star first baseman Matt Olson. The Dodgers, yes, they've added left-hander Tyler Anderson. The big one, 2020 NL MVP Freddie Freeman, Andrew Heaney as well. The Mets adding a lot of pitching. Pitcher Chris Bassett. Outfielder Starling Marte, that was a good signing as well. Max Scherzer pairing that guy with Jacob deGrom. You have the Phillies loading up on offense with Nick Castellanos and Kyle Schwarber. They also got Corey Knebel away from the Dodgers. And the Giants signed Alex Cobb, Bay Area native, an old friend, Jock Peterson, as well as left-handed starter Carlos Rodon. And Jerry just heard EK talking about and breaking it down in the National League. When you see some of those signings and other moves that have been made, what do you make of this senior circuit this year. I agree with the guys over there. I mean, I think the Dodgers right now on paper are the deepest team, but you also also have to respect the Atlanta Braves. They're the defending World Series champs. I think they've gotten a tick better, especially in their bullpen, adding already to that great bullpen, Kenley Jansen, a proven performer in the postseason. So it's going to be a dogfight between those two teams. Now watch out for the Mets. They have improved. Obviously, they're starting rotation, but that owner over there, will continue to make moves, especially at the trade deadline. So it should be awful fun. Now, the Phillies are going to be a fun team. The pitching kind of scares me with them. Yeah, he's already said he doesn't care about that. Whatever the Steve Cohen tax is at $290 <laughs> million, he's, he's okay with going well above that. Joe and Eric just talked about him. In seasons with the Dodgers, Kenley holds a 2.37 ERA, 0 0.93 whip. His 350 career saves. A Dodgers franchise record, and Kenley was a three-time All-Star from 2016 to 2018. And Kenley with this tweet saying, Today was a day filled with emotions. Thank you to the Dodgers organization and all the fans who bleed blue. Your love, including that tough love, helped make me the man I am today. I joined the Dodgers in 2004 when I was a 17-year-old kid from Curacao. Jerry, you were Kenley's teammate for a couple of years. You know him really well. And all of his accomplishments on the field, they should be celebrated today and by Dodger fans. Absolutely. You know what? Kenley Jansen has meant so much to this franchise. We saw it. He was signed as a catcher. And then Ned Coletti said, you know what? You can't hit that combio. How about you take that big arm to the mound? And it was a life-changing experience there for Kenley Jansen. It changed his whole life, his family's life, and he's become one of the greatest closers of all time. Borderline Hall of Famer, especially if he continues to progress the next three or four years in his career. Franchise record in saves, three-time All-Star, a World Series champion, incredible teammate. I always remember the conversations we would have in 2012, 
and in 2013 when he started to become a closer. Javi Guerra was a closer for the Dodgers in 12, and then Kenley overtook that in 12 and never let it go. And I'm so proud of this young man. He's become an incredible father as well, incredible husband. So happy for him. I wish him all the success in the world in Atlanta, not <laughs> against the show Dodgers. Well, we will see him against the show Dodgers. The first homestand of the year, the Braves will be coming here to Los Angeles. Actually, hopefully we don't see him. That means the Dodgers have the lead, and we won't get a chance to see Kenley close out a Braves win. Here now are the Dodgers' bullpen options. Currently on the 40-man roster, you have Phil Bickford and Justin Brewer. Both of them were nice surprises last year. Garrett Clevenger and Caleb Ferguson coming off of injuries. Victor Gonzalez looking for a bounce-back season. Looked good today. The bazooka bruised our ground. All, Daniel Hudson is back with the blue. Tommy Canely is coming off Tommy John surgery. David Price, Blake Trinan, Alex Vesia as well. The Dodgers still have some big arms in that bullpen, but it's going to be interesting, Jerry, to see who gets the ball for those final three outs because closing out games, it's not necessarily an easy job. It's why Nomar has said for years mm -hmm. that he felt like Kenley Jansen was the most important pitcher on the entire staff. It is the hardest three outs in the game, being that closer in the bottom of the ninth inning or the top of the ninth inning on the road to close it out. I really expect Blake Trinan to get the lion's share, especially early on. He has had success closing out game, but also Daniel Hudson, yeah. he closed out the World Series a couple years ago for the show, Nat, so obviously he has experience closing out games, and I think the dark horse, I think they're starting to groom the young man, the bazooka. <laughs> I think in the future, he will be the closer, but right now, learn from guys like Hudson and Blake Trinan. I think Blake Trinan is our closer at the start. Dave Roberts said a couple days ago, it could be bullpen by committee or closer by committee. Do you like that or no? I, I don't like that. You know what? I, manager Dave Roberts is saying the right things, and really that's what he should be saying because sometimes you want to make sure you put that bullpen on notice. Hey, it's kind of like a tryout right now. We're going to see who the best arm is to be that closer at the start. And I think Dave Roberts understands probably in early April, say, you know what? I'm going to appoint this guy as my closer because – you never want the unknown, especially on in that locker room, in that clubhouse, on the bench. You want to know, hey, we get a, a couple run lead, that dude is right. coming in to close out the game, and I'm hoping it is Blake the Train. All right. Still more to come here on.